10 hours by plane, 10 hours by car, and now 6 hours by horse. We're finally here, fly camp. In the heart of Central Asia, where time seems to stand still, lies a land full of boundless adventure and untamed wilderness, Kazakhstan. As the ninth largest country on earth, its landscape stands out as diverse as it's captivating. We just stocked up on some beer and food in general. Uh, this is the last bit of civilization. We're 60 kilometers away from the Chinese border. We're very, very far east here in Kazakhstan. Behind me, you see the Alakol Lake. Uh, it seems to be a tourist place. Uh, and we really looking forward to leave now to camp, leaving all signals and mobile phones behind and heading up there. Looking forward to this adventure. There's one region above all others, the legendary Alatau Mountains. At base camp, we met Alexander, head and heart of his Kazakh hunting agency. Located at the foot of the Alatau Mountains, it offered our last haven of civilization in all its beautiful simplicity. We met Ivan, an extremely experienced hunting guide that now works as the taxidermist on site. Plov and Bosch, Two delicious and typical Russian dishes that only get topped by the hospitality of our hosts. The meat came from a successful Siberian roe deer hunt last month. As soon as we get near the hunting grounds, my highest priority is to zero my rifle. The shift in temperature and air pressure along with the unpredictability of how my scope and rifle were handled during the journey, compel me to double-check my zero to guarantee the needed precision. So the first shot is at 150 meters. Uh, corresponding to the app, it says one click up. Uh, same what my turret says here. So we will go for that one click up and see if we can punch a hole in the 150 yard, 150 meter range. Bullseye. 
So just for the record, the black ones aren't mine. These two shots were made on 300 meters and that's exactly where we need to be. A bone strike delivered, that's exactly what we're here for. Leaving base camp, heading up to fly camp. First, a few kilometers up, we'll be with the car and then we'll move on to the horses. It's brutal hot, to be honest. We get a little bit cooler weather up there. Challenging 34 degrees Celsius forced everyone into the shade. Even Pushka, the camp dog, had to rest. Good. Will be great. Will be a fantastic adventure. We are approaching the edge of the plateau to meet our hunting guides. One hour into horseback riding. Uh, we are almost up the mountain. We have four hours in front of us until we reach fly camp. Let's go. So we are 1,486 meters high right now. We we'll probably go up another 500 to 1,000. And that's where we start the hunt basically. Now we just heard that um, a lot of wolves were seen in the territory lately. This makes it tough. Uh, animals will stand up uh, so they will looking for higher ground and they will be of course uh, very cautious of what's going on around them. <laughs> tough hunt in Kazakhstan. I need to rely on my equipment so I can trust it without question. Minor mistakes quickly add up in the field and determine failure or success, triumph or defeat. Imagine a scenario where your heart is racing, the ground beneath you is unstable and covered with loose rocks. Every sharp stone and thorn you lie on digs into your skin and you find yourself in the most challenging shooting position imaginable. That's what it's like to hunt ibex in Kazakhstan. Ten hours by plane, ten hours by car, and now six hours by horse. We're finally here, fly camp. Fly camp is home now. Six tents set up in the hunting ground a week prior to our arrival. Four tents for us and two for basic food, for you. water and equipment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, super. <laughs> the 
aber ich weiß nicht, was hier drin ist. Gut. Gut. So, dieser Piroschki. Piroschki. And they are filled with potatoes or meat. They have some Ibex meatballs here as well, but since I'm not 100% sure whether my stomach will deal with this stuff, I rather stick with the non-meat stuff and eat the that? meat I brought. And of course, everywhere in Asia you go, you get some chai, black tea. And then the first group of males appear. I'm thrilled and I can't wait for tomorrow. We spent the evening making plans. Everything feels like the calm before the storm. we saw last night. What a frustrating start. Uh, we had a fantastic chance this morning, but communication is so tough with these guys. Uh, they don't speak a word English, I don't speak a word Russian, and that's tough. Uh, we had a group of five males uh, right in front of us, 200 meters, perfect position, but for some reason he didn't want me to take a shot and go above the edge uh, to place down the rifle. Uh, so instead, we spooked them and then we tried to follow them and follow them and at some point we ran into some females. They started uh, whispering or not whispering, they they do some kind of sound that's very typical for them. Uh, the chamois does it as well and basically it's a warning sound. So the Ibex, the group were, was warned and they took off. No chance for us to get close to them. So, okay, that's it, uh, call it a day, 
or a morning stalk. What we'll do now is we get on the horses and try to cover some ground and see if we can locate any other males. Let's see. Horseback riding is a crucial skill when you hunt for ibex in Central Asia. If Kazakhstan is a designated goal of yours, add it to your checklist. So we just ran into a group of ibex. I hope they did not see us. We will stalk upon this hill and then try to climb down. We try to position ourselves above the ibex. This highlights a fascinating aspect of the animal's natural behavior and environmental awareness. Ibex, like many other mountain animals, are exceptionally sharp-eyed about threats that might approach them from below. I think they saw us on our pH and that's why they took off. Worth a try. Predators, including wolves and leopards, often attempt to ambush from lower elevations where they can blend into the terrain and vegetation. and we found them. In the summer month, male ibex build groups and stay together until the rot begins in November. That's far, too far for me. So tough night, uh, we had a pack of wolves around and um, I don't know, uh, communication is as known difficult with the guys but uh, we just heard them screaming and I just asked them when we woke up like what was going on last night and they were like there was many wolves, many wolves and uh, so now they are trying to check the horses. Ah, Wolf climbing it sir. Over there. Mm -hmm. And you hear the wolf? Uh, no, feel it. Yeah. Our early morning strategy to head out and track down the big group of ibex we had sighted last night fell apart when a pack of wolves attacked our horses right in the camp. Whoa.
We had to start from scratch. Find the highest mountain, climb it, and look for Ibex. It seemed like we missed our chance when suddenly our guide Dastan spotted the group we encountered on our first day. Daylight was fading fast. With the sun already set behind the mountains, we had to make a plan of how to approach the group safe, fast and undetected. And there's my chance, 362 meters away. I expect a bullet drop of 49.3 centimeters counteracted with 13 clicks on my scope. I breathe out. The light is gone, but I don't want to lose this moment. I have dreamed about this for so many years, and now we did it. We will have to leave him here for the night. The batteries of our backup camera light won't last until we budget the Ibex on site. We will come back tomorrow. Hopefully the wolves will stay away that night. As soon as we arrive, the guides measure the trophy length. So here he is, our mid-Asian Ibex. What an epic adventure here in Kazakhstan. As wild as it can get. Absolutely happy with the Norma Bond strike. Did a fantastic job highly precise, on long ranges, and effective. And that's exactly what we needed here. What an adventure in those mountains. This? We covered the Ibex with a blanket. This? No, no. The human smell connected to it kept the wolves away. Every piece of meat will come with us back to camp. The Kazakhs do not open the abdominal cavity. The back straps, front and rear legs and the strong neck parts are getting cut off the bone. I love to have this Ibex in, in my backpack, but then I can't use my backpack for the next six days. So no cool pictures with me and the wings in the back. Back to fly camp. Dastan is preparing the trophy. The cape needs to get scraped off the bone to get fully salted. The salt takes away the moisture of the skin. This is absolutely crucial if you want more than just a white bone on the wall. So that's Ibex meat. 
the one I shot yesterday. Mm. Surprisingly good <laughs> for the fact that he stayed all night in the valley where I shot him. Yeah. We made it back to base camp. After six days in a wild, we sit back and enjoy watching Ivan preparing the skull. I feel a much better understanding of the ibex behavior and habitat now. It requires significant skill in terrain navigation and stealth. Hunters must adapt that climbing and moving silently over difficult terrain, often in adverse weather conditions. May your journey be safe, your aim true, and your heart open to the lessons that the mountains and the ibex have to teach. Remember, success is not measured by trophy length, but by the experience and insights gained along the way. My adventure in Kazakhstan was an opportunity to honor the spirit of the ibex and the heritage of the land, forging memories that will resonate long after my return. And this was our Norma Ibex hunt here in Kazakhstan. Pure wilderness is what it describes best. I'm highly satisfied with my Ibex and the performance of the Norma Bond Strike. If you like videos like this, please consider subscribing to the Norma YouTube channel. Leave us a like and a comment. This helps us to produce videos like this for you. So stay safe and keep on hunting. I tell him all the time as well, good shape is important in what we do. Yeah. And that's the stew. Doesn't look good, but it's really good. <laughs>